Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about diving into genres where you might think you're gonna be in trouble. This may sound kind of strange coming from me because if you followed me on my channel for long enough you realize that I kind of read everything but the kitchen sink. With the serious exception of erotica but that's because I've tried it, I hated it, I'm never going into like those waters ever again, did it once, never happening again, I hate it. I thought about this recently because if you've also followed me long enough you know that I love a particular book series called the Red Rising Trilogy by Pierce Brown and I recommend it to literally everyone, I especially say even if you think you don't like science fiction. And that got me thinking about how, well, yes, I do read kind of anything but the kitchen sink, but if you were to take me into the fantasy science fiction genre, I'll tell you, I'm probably gonna go for fantasy over science fiction nine out of 10 times. And the reason is that for the longest time of a lot of the fiction genres, science fiction was one that I didn't really read. And for one simple reason, I was kind of terrified of it. This sounds kind of silly because if you give me a science fiction film or TV series, I'm like so on board. I'm the first person there for like Star Trek, Almost Human, Doctor Who, Star Wars, even though you could make the argument that Star Wars is actually just fantasy in space clothing, like whatever. I'm down for it on screen. I love it. I am so all about that. Part of why I am totally on the Stranger Things train and why I think that show was brilliant is the whole 80s nostalgia for like. But when it came to reading in a book, totally different story. I, with the exception of a couple Star Trek novels, which I read when I was in elementary school, please don't judge me. I never really read science fiction. I just, I just didn't do it. And it's for again, the reason that I was kind of scared of it. And the reason I was terrified of science fiction was I'm kind of math science impaired. I was never particularly adept at science or math when I was in school. I mean, I made respectable grades. I am what my mom lovingly calls OFP, which means own fucking program. Basically, if I wasn't in love with the topic, I was gonna do kind of the maximum minimal amount of effort that I would have to do in order to make a respectable grade. And that was gonna be it. I wasn't gonna try any harder. I was never gonna get particularly invested in it. I just never really liked math or science and I still don't. If you looked at my English grades, that was a totally different story because I was all about that English literature life. So when I did finally start going into science fiction, I found sometimes that I either really didn't like it or oftentimes it was kind of hard science fiction and it involved a lot of science and there were words and I didn't, know what they meant and then I was like oh my god this looks like math oh my god this looks like science I don't like it like mm. so if you're like me and you're science impaired I figured I would just list a couple of science fiction titles for people like me who are kind of terrified of science fiction because by this point I do go into science fiction and prepare myself to enjoy it but I'm surprisingly very, very picky about it because I'm like, if it still looks like it's gonna be a lot of science gobbledygook that I'm not gonna understand, we have problems. The first one I'm gonna recommend is Red Rising by Pierce Brown. It is science fiction, even if you think you hate science fiction. The reason that I think this works for people who are potentially afraid of science fiction is that it could really be called space fantasy a lot of it. There's not a particularly a lot of hard science fiction and even the terms that are used, you pretty much pick up what they mean. So this is borderline like space fantasy, science fantasy in a way. And it's also really heavily steeped in classic mythology and classic literature. I mean, just think Count of Monte Cristo. And then also there's tons of pop culture references, which there are more like Easter eggs eggs than anything else if you catch them it's sort of fun but it is so much more steeped in mythology and I think it is a lot of hard science fiction which is what makes it so fun and the, no seriously like this is kind of the number one if you think you hate science fiction you haven't tried this at least and it's also good if you at least want science fiction that's kind of more we're in space and there are space battles and stuff like that without it you know, again, being too much like science and math gobbledygook that just gets confusing. Another science fiction piece that I'd recommend if you're unsure about science fiction or like me, again, was terrified of it, Illuminae by J. Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. This is another book that I've talked about many times on this channel. Now this book could technically be considered slightly more hard science fiction because there's like science and stuff involved, but it's the construction of the book that makes it so good. It is compiled like it is this massive file, this dossier of documents and chat logs and video transcripts and actually really beautiful internal artwork. And so you're really more kind of figuring out the puzzle and following the characters more than you are trying to pay attention to any of the specifics of the sciences. As a result, you get this 
science fiction horror action thriller mystery survival all wrapped up into one kind of book yeah it does kind of have everything and i s i still can't believe that Kristoff and Kaufman were able to literally just kind of throw everything but the kitchen sink into this book and make it work. You're not supposed to be able to do that. The one caveat I will give is that if you're really not into something that is a, can technically sort of be called an epistolary novel format, you'll have trouble with this book because it is not written like a traditional novel. So that is my one caveat. Next, I would suggest Ready Player One by Ernest Cline especially if you are currently in the Stranger Things fandom and you have not read this book. This is something that is missing from your life. Besides the fact that Steven Spielberg has a film adaptation of this coming out either next year or 2018. I'm really actually hoping I'm remembering right that it's next year because that would be super exciting. Ready Player One is best pitched as Willy Wonka meets Tron. This is another science fiction novel that doesn't depend upon really math or science. It's much more steeped in kind of geek and nerd culture, especially geek nerd culture of the 1980s. Again, if you're into Stranger Things, this is a book that should be on your list and it would be awesome also if you tried the audiobook because Will Wheaton narrates it and that's just so many levels of perfect you cannot even handle. The main reason again that I suggest this is because it doesn't depend on math and science as much like in terms of sending facts and figures down your throat and making people like me terrified and confused and cringing in the corner going, oh God, no, why? It's fast and it's quick and I think it knows that it's meant to be fun. The great part is that Ernest Cline has another book entitled Armada, so if you're kind of more into aliens space invasion kind of thing, you can check out Armada, which is kind of equally like Ready Player One, fast, quick, fun, doesn't totally depend on math and science, does sort of depend upon you being into what's called nerd culture and like video gaming culture. So if you're not totally into those things, you might find some of the references rather obscure or kind of go over your head. I know there were a lot of things referenced in both of these books that I didn't often recognize because I'm just not in that culture, it's not in my brain space, but I still really enjoyed it because the characters were imminently likable, the plot was really fast and engaging, and they were really quick to dive into. Considering how much I've mentioned I was terrified of science fiction because of math and science, this pick might seem a little surprising. It's The Martian by Andy Weir. Um, this is a book that actually has a lot of science going on in it. Um, <laughs> there is a lot of science and there's no getting around it, and I'm not gonna lie, that was a little intimidating when I went into it. Actually, part of the reason I actively avoided this book for so long was because I had been told it was very science heavy and I was like, oh, I don't, I don't think I can handle. Oh, this is just making me cringe. I don't think I can do it. However, the p reason that I was able to kind of move past the science and like not get bogged down, confused slash go and break into nervous sweats over it is because the main character is so relatable. He's really sarcastic, he's foul-mouthed. His attitude is something that's so refreshing. So when he sits there and he has to kind of lay out all the science to you, it's done in a way where it doesn't feel intimidating. And even if I don't fully understand everything that is said at me at points, I can get enough that I'll just sort of nod my head and go, okay, sure, yeah and just sort of move on. And it's mainly because, again, Watney is so relatable and that when he's having a problem, you're just like, I like this guy's reaction. I mean, I'd be swearing about that too. Good on him for not trying to be all like, I am like totally noble now, we'll get through this. He's just like, fuck, this sucks. I hate this, I'm gonna die, oh my God. Okay, but now I gotta move on. Okay, we gotta do the thing, but fuck, this sucks. There's an element of that that I really liked about Wani, which is what I think makes, despite the fact that this novel is significantly more science heavy than any of the other books on this list, more relatable and easier to get into. Some honorable mentions in that they are technically science fiction, but either I'm not totally crazy about them or I think they fall more into like another category oftentimes. You have The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. These are fairy tale retellings that have a science fiction twist. So again, Science is really not the point. The point is really the fairy tale retelling and there is kind of an element almost of science fantasy to it, especially by the end. So again, it gets an honorable mention because I'm not entirely sure this is like people who want to get into science fiction that this is the route they want to go. There's Legend of the Galactic Heroes Volume 1 Dawn. I read this and I liked it. I didn't love it. From what I've heard of most people, they actually prefer the anime adaptation more than they do the books. The books are really, uh, 
uh, thin. They are almost like light novels. I think they are extremely short and breeze through, but I think at the detriment of making me really care or feel immersed in the world. Despite the fact that the audiobooks are narrated by the ever great Tim Gerard Reynolds, who just, that man's voice has my heart end. <sighs> But those are kind of the books that I say, at least in my case, when I was younger, I wish had been there to kind of get me into science fiction a little more than just reading Star Trek novels. Again, please don't judge me. There are plenty of other science fiction novels out there, and I obviously have not mentioned some of the ones that are considered like seminal classics, but a lot of those I either don't particularly like all that much. Yeah, I'm looking at you, I don't, I don't like either of you. Or if they were novels where I was going into science fiction for the first time, these are the ones that would definitely latch me into the genre. So again, this is just my list of books where I'm like, well, if it's just me personally and you read a bit like me, then these are the books that would get me into science fiction and would make me want to read more science fiction and experiment in the genre. But that's it for me today, you guys. And so until next time, cheers. <laughs>